right, hey parents, and welcome to this week's episode of Shaping Arrows, uh, where we offer quick encouragements and how-tos uh, to making disciples in your home. Uh, we're really excited this week. We have Pastor Andrew, uh, pastor of Mercy Hill Church, with us uh, to be able to talk about uh, what does it look like to make disciples in your home specifically related to cultivating a love for the Bible in our kids. Uh, I know as a parent, that's a huge deal for us, um, that our kids would love the word uh, and be you know, pursuing a relationship with God um, as they grow up in that way. Uh, and so, Andrew, I got a few questions for you. Uh, it's for, for our parents out there. Uh, first question, just kind of uh, you know, lighthearted. What's kind of a funny story maybe from you growing up and your relationship with your dad or something like that, or parents learning the Bible, uh, or you with your kids as you've taught them and try to cultivate a love for the Bible in them? What's kind of something that you've encountered in that? Yeah, I've talked, man, I've talked about it before. Uh, I was, I was really lucky in terms of just, um, my dad's a storyteller still to this day with my kids. And, um, man, he just never was annoyed by me wanting to hear the same stories over and over and over. So he did a good job, but, uh, he did better than me. I, you were saying funny. I remember, I can't remember the, I can't remember exactly what it was. I, I think I used it in a sermon four or five years ago, but I knew that I wasn't as good as my dad with the stories whenever AP was like, I don't know, three years old or something. And he's like, Hey, you know, I can't remember exactly what it was, but he was like, Hey, tell me the one where, you know, the guy gets baptized after he has leprosy and then he kills the giant and gets swallowed by a whale, <laughs> you know? And it was like, uh, some kind of way. These are all sort of, you know, they're all, they're just like one giant story about whatever, you know, I can't remember exactly what the details were. It was something like that, where it was like four or five stories all together. Man, um, it's all one big story. Anyway, I know. Right? So it's one, one character. Jesus. and No, but it's, <laughs> yeah, I love, man, I love the stories. I think there's a lot of power in the stories for the kid, for kids and adults. But Yeah, that's awesome. That's awesome storytelling and, and how that's impacted you. I think that even impacts your preaching and, and how you preach yeah. too. So, um, man, what are, what are a couple of resources that you would say, man, these are things that have shaped how I view um, or things that I've used in terms of teaching my kids and they're growing their love for the word. Yeah. Man, we, uh, you know, we, we, uh, we think a lot about just kind of that, man, we don't want discipleship to be an event in our home. We want it to be a culture. And I think you see that in Deuteronomy and, and the, there's an idea of like, a, when you, you know, when you rise and when you go down and when you're, you know, when you're just kind of going through life, um, so, you know, I, with, I want to make sure I say that before I, I kind of get into resources, because even though we really want to have kind of a culture of discipleship, I do think there is a real important, um, aspect of that, that is kind of that focal point of the day. And for us, I've talked about this before, but for us, uh, man, you know, if I was going to, if I was going to say two resources, um, the first resource I would say is a dedicated time. I know that's maybe not what people would think. They would think a book or, or something like that. But what is the time, you know, during the day when your kids and, and my kids can, they know, man, this is the time when we're going to recenter. You know, this is the time when we're going to talk about the Lord. This is the time when we're going to uh, talk about our Bible verse from Mercy Hill Kids, or we're going to maybe even sing a song or whatever. Certainly going to get into the Bible, though. Yeah. And for us, that's around the breakfast table. Um, and you know, it's, it's honestly been one of those things that I has become so protected for me, uh, that, you know, there's, there's other, you know, I would love to be one of these guys who goes and plays basketball at six 30 in the morning before work or something like that, or even take meetings, um, a lot more, but man, it's, it's so protected and it's so rhythmic and so ingrained, um, that for us for 10 to 15 minutes every morning, there's a recentering, there's a rhythmic prayer, man, we're going to, we know what we're going to pray for that day. And we're going to read in the Jesus storybook Bible. Uh, the second resource I would say is, man, I, and I know there's a lot of them out there, man, we've discipled all of our kids with the Jesus storybook Bible. Um, I feel like it really keeps the main thing, the main thing. Uh, certainly they learn a lot of morality. They learn a lot of what God wants for their life, but they never have that disconnected from a Christian worldview. You could teach a kid, you could teach kids a lot of Bible stories, um, but if it, you know, there's a lot of stories that, that really, depending on the way you teach them, they, you know, I mean, somebody from another faith could teach them the point you're trying to make if it's just about morality, you know, and so we've used that Jesus storybook Bible and man, we've really enjoyed that and, and kind of having a dedicated time uh, in the mornings for 15 minutes has been just really good. 
Yeah, man, I think that's great. I think the, the consistency of that, I think, pays dividends, like, over time. Uh, and then, man, Jesus Storybook Bible is is one of the, like, most used resources. I think just yeah. the, the benefit of it being gospel-centered um, and knowing that you're reading through the Bible in a way that always points to Jesus is, is huge. So, well, man, what what's, like, one or two action steps or encouragements that you would give to parents out there? You know, we got parents that are watching that, you know, they're – you know, brand new to this thing. They maybe have toddlers uh, or maybe, you know, expecting babies soon. We've also got parents that have teenagers. And so, um, you know, what would you say to these parents? Like maybe one or two action steps or encouragements that you would offer to them? Yeah, man, I, I would love to talk about that for a minute. Um, I'll, I'll give you two. You know, I, I got some advice or very early on when, when Hattie Joe was probably, I don't know, just a couple of years old. We were living at, uh, we were living in Raleigh, Durham. I was part of the Summit Church over there. And our pastor, J.D. Greer, uh, he said, man, a lot of people have very elaborate plans for discipleship for their kids. And he said, man, I'm all for that. I love that. That's how you're wired. But he said, man, our plan is uh, basically from zero to about four or five years old, they need to learn the word no. <laughs> okay. And then from about, you know, you know, it's, you know, the ages aren't, but generally from five or six to like 12, you need to stuff them full of the Bible where they under, they know every story. They got a million, you know, they got a hundred Bible verses. I mean, just, they need the Bible. And then when they hit their teenage years, you know, it's all about 13 to 18, man. It's all about kind of walking with them and learning how the discipline that you first taught them and the Bible you second, the second thing you taught them kind of walks its way out in real life at their school in real tough circumstances, in relationships, man, when they do sin, that kind of stuff. Now, you know, truth be told, I mean, Anna and I, we're, our oldest is a fifth grader. So we're, we're still kind of just now cresting that, you know, you know, man, really trying to get into kind of the walking it out every day in life part. But I, I, man, that's something that I latched on to. And I just kind of was like, man, I know that ain't like a Bible verse, but that feels right to me. Yeah. Um, so man, really teaching kids discipline and honoring the father and mother man, you know, starting four or five years old, just stuffing them full of the Bible. And we get that through kids ministry. We get that through memory verses. We get that through Bible stories. And then, and then, you know, those teenage years, just really helping them walk it out. I think, man, the second action step, I would say, I don't want to be redundant, Brant, but man, I, I would still say, man, having a time where the whole family comes together in a family worship moment every day, if you, if you can. Um, and I say every day, man, there's probably, we there, we probably do five days a week, honestly, maybe six, but, um, you know, there are times, Sunday's our time now, you know, we just kind of, we moved right from the breakfast table to worship. So we're still worshiping together, but maybe not doing our routine. But anyway, uh, man, I was reading this, I was reading this week, uh, you know, Jim Elliott, I mean, just the famed story of uh, giving his life for the Alcas in the, in the 50s and, um, and uh, you know, Elizabeth Elliot and all that. And I'm, I'm reading back through, through Gates of Splendor now. And it was, man, it just struck me that they said that one of the most life-changing things for Jim Elliot was that every day at breakfast, his dad would get the Bible out and read to the kids and the wow. kids would squirm and they were just kind of, but that was it. It wasn't anything bigger than that, but it was at least that. And it was every day, <laughs> man, wow. get the Bible out and read to the kids and it just formed his worldview. So uh, I would really, I would really push people to have a moment Man, we've we've had to refer a lot of people to biblical counseling over the years. Um, I've I've done biblical counseling. You know that that's uh, that's that's not a shameful thing. I think it's a good thing. But man, for some people, th that that referral has come because the family's splitting apart, and that's that's a real that's a real shame, and it's a really sad. And our biblical counselor that we've referred to for five years, he told me that he's never seen somebody come and be there when their family's splitting apart that he didn't go down to the certain question on their questionnaire form that they all turn in. And it says, do you have a family devotional time? And the answer is 100% of the time, no. Wow. So I'm not saying that if you have it, that you can't end up there, but I am saying that if you end up there, you know, it's the chances are that, you know, you're not, the chances are that, that something got dropped a long way back. So I would just really encourage our families like, man, your parent, your kids need to see you and your wife and man, they need to man do it together as a family. It ain't gotta be elaborate. You ain't gotta be a pastor. 10 minutes, read the word. Uh, man, it's just, I think it's life changing for them. I love that, man. I think too, is like for, for parents that, that maybe you haven't done this before. Maybe you do have older kids is like, it's, it's never too late to start. 
Yeah. Uh, it's not about perfection. It's about making progress in these things and, and trusting that God's moving and, and all of it. Um, man, thank you so much for, for being with us uh, on, on this episode. Yeah. And I, I know that that was a huge uh, help to, to a lot of our parents out there. Uh, and so, you know, parents, I have to ask you, like, what are the things that you are doing uh, to engage your uh, kids with the Bible? You know, we really want these Shaping Area episodes to be helpful, uh, but to also start a discussion uh, among our parents. And so uh, I'd invite you to comment below uh, and just kind of begin the conversation. We'll have uh, different staff on there that would love to talk with you guys. Uh, if you need help, need uh, point, pointing to resources and things like that. Um, we want to resource you, equip you to make disciples in your home. Um, if you felt like this uh, content was really helpful to you, uh, we would encourage you and, and ask you to share it with others. Uh, we want others to hear um, how their parenting uh, can be changed by the gospel, how God can do some amazing things through it. Uh, and so we would love for you to share this with somebody else. Uh, and we'll see you next time, parents, on Shaping Eras.